Welcome to this episode of How To Metrology. We're going to talk about in this what to expect in your coordinate measuring machine calibration. In CMM calibration, there's a couple procedures. The B89 is an older ANSI standard that a few uh, contractors still use with a ball bar. It's fairly simple. The more complex one that's more commonly used nowadays by the factories is the ISO 10360. ISO 10360 uses length masters. Those length masters are used to evaluate and certify the length in one dimension as well as a spatial or three-dimensional. You'll see that in this video. It's also used, um, the 10360 will include what you need to evaluate your probe, uh, which is sometimes called the THP factor within a 10360. That is done with a sphere and a ring gauge. The length work is done with a step gauge, which is this. Uh, which has calibrated lengths or a stack of gauge blocks just depends on what your tech has the day he shows up. In this example, the gauge blocks are one, two, three, four, and 500 millimeters long. They're capable of going on a diagonal, which is what you'll need for your spatial or your three-dimensional calibration. For good habits, your technician should come in with gloves for handling all of his artifacts, and they should always have a calibrated thermometer to gauge the temperature of each artifact in between each of his setups. So calibration on a CMM needs to include at least 66% of the entire measuring volume. It needs to also include all three directions of measurement. Your X, which is left to right, your Y, front to back, and your Z, which is vertical. In addition to those, they're going to check what are called spatials. Typically spatials are checked in a minimum of four locations, each corner. In a spatial, the artifacts are set at a diagonal like this. This requires that the machine move in X, Y, and Z direction, which would then allow you to map out or see any error in the entire measuring volume. This machine is measuring in the Y axis direction, front to back. Each cycle, it probes a point on a step gauge to calculate a distance. That distance is then uh, compared to the nominal, and we can then calculate the deviation uh, that this machine is from perfect. This machine is measuring in the Y direction at the time, and it will check uh, five different locations, 100 millimeters, 200 millimeters, 300, 400, and 500 millimeter lengths. Each of those lengths is inspected three times. Measurements will be made um, in both the inboard, which is the area closest to the drive, as well as the outboard, which is the furthest way from the drive, those measurements will be compared for any whip, if you will, or lag that one side of the machine bridge has from the other. Also to cover the entire length to make sure we get that 66% of measuring volume, this gauge will be moved from the front to the middle to the back to cover the full 70 plus inches of the particular machine that we're at right now. Part of the calibration process is going to include the measurement and evaluation of THP. THP evaluates the measuring uncertainty within your electronics of your probe sensor. This is performed by scanning four circles or half circles around your calibration sphere at designated speeds. Ring gauge artifacts are inspected in three different planes, X, Y, YZ and ZX. The intention is to evaluate any error that might be in the electronics of the probe sensor as well as any squareness issues that might be in any of those axial planes. To do this correctly, it's also recommended that it's scanned at different speeds. Today we're going to scan this very slowly at 5 millimeters per second and that will be followed up with a faster scan at 20 millimeters per second. That's how we calibrate a coordinate measuring machine here. We recommend um, that you leave some room before your service tech shows up because he will have two to three large Pelican cases with artifacts and tools and setup standards. Uh, he will also possibly have a step stool depending on the size of your machine. From a timing, you should budget at least one to two days for a proper calibration, three to four days if you're having a preventative maintenance. If a tech comes in and gets the job done in less than one day, I would seriously question uh, the quality of his work and see what steps he may have skipped in the process. 
Regarding preventative maintenance, it is definitely recommended you do that on an annual basis. Preventative maintenance is done by a, a trained, qualified factory technician, and that will include uh, tuning of your CNC drives. It will include tuning of a scanning probe head if you have one. Uh, there's some adjustments that should be made in joysticks if they begin the drift. Uh, they can take that out. Uh, they will also adjust air bearings, which takes a little bit of time, as well as checking uh, cables and harnesses to make sure nothing's coming unplugged, and voltage. So there's quite a bit that goes on uh, in a preventative maintenance, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, prevents service calls midway through the year. Thanks again, and please subscribe for more content.